we talk about creating champions, not saboteurs with our partners. So whatever the dream is somebody has, it's their dream and it's critically important. On the outside, you may say, oh, that's small, but it isn't. To me, it's more the process that somebody's starting to learn that and then they can go out and change and be bold. You're listening to The Life and Money Show, a podcast that brings you the stories and strategies of people who are living a meaningful and intentional life by design, building true wealth for their families and impacting the world around them. And now here are your hosts, Annie Dickerson and Julie Lamb. Hello, hello, everyone. I'm Annie Dickerson. And together with Julie Lamb, we just wanted to welcome you to another episode of The Life and Money Show. Today, we've got special guests for you, Rika and Chris Kluver. They are the founders of Life on Your Terms. And speaking of which, Life on Your Terms, or as we call it, Life by Design, rather than by default, This is a huge and very profound concept. I remember back when I was getting started in investing and people asked me, if money were no object, what would you do with your time, with your day? And like many of the investors that we talk to now, I stumbled and I was like, well, I don't know. I I guess I would take some vacations or buy a vacation home, maybe I would do this. But I didn't have that clear vision or that clear dream or that clear goal at that time. So that's something that we talk about in this conversation, because that's a big piece that Rika and Chris help their clients to do is to really take off that how filter, the how am I going to do this? How does that work? Take off that filter for a moment and really think about the what. Dream big and think about the what that you want to achieve and then add in the how often becomes the easier piece. And so this is something that not only have I gone through myself, but also both Chris and Rika have gone through, Julie has gone through, the members of our Good Egg team have gone through, many of our investors have gone through too, is this process of just stopping and reflecting on what does success really mean to you and where is it that you ultimately are trying to get to. Another thing that we talk about in this episode is this concept of that desire that you have that's within you, whether that's meaningful to anybody else doesn't matter. That desire was put into you for a reason and you're meant to learn certain things on that path to get to that goal. And so on this show, Chris and Rika not only share about their experience and their background, but also I think more importantly, they share some of these guiding questions that they use with their clients to help to help really shape and help really think about what is the most important thing to you. And so I definitely listen in for that part. Grab a notebook, grab a pen, because you're going to want to write down those questions because they're not questions that you can answer in a quick moment's notice. They're questions that you're going to want to sit with, meditate about, and really be intentional about. And if you do so, I promise you it's going to drastically change your life. Okay, so now before we dive in though, I did want to talk a bit about our resource that we have for all of you. For those of you who, because building wealth is a big piece of creating life on your terms or a life by design, And real estate investing is a great way to do that, but not everybody has the time or the energy or the interest to invest in rental properties, manage them, and deal with all the hassles of being a landlord. So a great way to get into real estate, to protect and grow your wealth is through passive real estate investing through something called real estate syndications or group investments, which is what we specialize in at Good Egg Investments. So if you're new to the whole concept of real estate syndications. We've got the perfect resource for you. We've distilled all our experience and our wisdom down into one book, and it's called Investing for Good. We have a free hardcover copy for all of you. Just go to goodegginvestments.com slash book. Now with that, let's dive into our conversation with Chris and Rika Kluver. Chris and Rika, welcome to the show. How are you both? Very well. Thank you for having us. Yes, Annie. Thank you so much. 
So great to have you both here. Now, Chris, I want to start with you because I know that you experienced a profound wake-up call that catapulted you onto the path that you and Rika are currently on. I believe after successfully building over 14 companies, which is incredible, you experienced a season of life that forced you to really stop and reflect. And while in recovery from major surgery, you looked around and noticed that you had everything that you had ever wanted, everything that most people dream about, the fancy cars, the big houses, the financial freedom. But yet for some reason, you still didn't feel that true joy in your life. And so this is something that I feel like so many people experience in some capacity or other. Maybe they haven't reached all the way to financial freedom, but they've checked off some boxes where they feel like, yeah, those are the things I want to accomplish, but why am I not feeling that joy? So take us back to that time. Tell us a little bit more about that moment in your life and what eventually it has led you to? Well, again, thank you so much for having us on. It was about seven years ago. I found myself laying on the couch, fully debilitated, had hip and knee replacement surgeries over the course of a year, all since my youth. But I found myself in a position where I was forced downtime. And Annie, candidly, I'm not very good at downtime. So to not even be able to read, to just sit there it really forced me to go introspective. And I remember sitting there laying on the couch, beautiful day, sun coming in, immobile, and I'm clicking through the daytime TV and I'm not a big TV person. And if you've never experienced daytime TV, holy smokes, that is an experience (laughs) of itself. But I discovered what a Cardassian was. And I know some people love the Cardassians, but from my perspective, I'm watching this and here are these beautiful people with all of these resources and all of this fame and connections. And yet it seemed like all they were really doing was complaining a lot. Yeah. And I went through an, a paradigm shift in my thinking because I realized I had been comparing my success in a very similar way to the way that the Cardassians had been comparing their success. And it was at that point that I started to go down that rabbit hole and realize that I had completely lost control of the narrative of what success was. And if it's only about money and stuff, I guarantee there's always going to be some Saudi who can kick your ass. Mm -hmm. So you get on that hedonic treadmill, moving those goalposts, and you will never, ever achieve it. So it was through that process that it started Rika and I thinking to look at success differently and look at it more on a holistic, fully integrated way of looking at it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like it was a really a change that forced you to really reflect on your life. And most people, I think Oprah says, life gives you these little whispers. And if you don't pay attention, life will hit you over the head with it. And it sounds like you had one of those moments where you were forced to really pay attention. And from that came a new definition of what success meant. And so Rika, I want to ask you, because I know you have sort of a counseling background. So I'm sure that you had come across people like this all the time, maybe not Kardashian, maybe quality or level, but people who were seeking that joy and that contentment and fulfillment in their life, but weren't finding it. And so maybe around this time, what was your definition of success? And then how did you guys come together to really reinvent and rethink about your life trajectory? Mm, That's a good question. Let me think. So I want to add to Chris's story just to make it even more like what happened was that we love, we both love adventure, travel, being outside, being outdoors. And at the time that he had his surgeries or after that, I should say, and he was recovering, we watch a lot of Alaska shows, the ones where people are striving, making, building log cabins, fishing, hunting, but they're doing it on their terms. And that's what Chris realized that they were happier than the Kardashians, that they were so grateful and they showed a lot of gratitude for what they had, even though it was very minimal, but they made the most of it and they really enjoyed the way they were living. And I think that's what really got Chris going. And he shared that with me. And because of that, we had in a way already been doing that sort of life at the time, but we became even more intentional that what is it that we were looking for? What did we really want to do? How did we want to spend our time together? What did we want to do as adventures? How did we want to live life? Those things became much more apparent after his surgeries and after this epiphany he had about what does it mean to have life, to live life on your terms? And so I would say that it became more of a way of life for us after that time. 
Mm-hmm. And I know that that's become a real, like a very meaningful, for lack of a better word, term for you is life on your terms. It's the mm-hmm. name of your company. And so tell us, what does that mean to you? Is it about money? Is it about time? Is it about freedom or all of that? What does it mean to live life on your terms? If I can take that one, it's something where I've come to the belief, and we talk a lot, that I think the construct of work-life balance is antiquated. It doesn't exist. I think it's bunk. I don't think it's possible. But I do think that a healthy, fully integrated work-life integration is possible. And the more intentionality you can put towards things, the more you can start to treat yourself as a primary asset of your organization, and specifically with like your listeners. They are the primary asset of what they're driving. And as such, they have to protect, cultivate, nurture that asset. So if you are a better spouse, if you're a better parent, if you're a better you, if you're healthy, you're actually going to make better decisions. And, and as a result, things across the board expand. To me, life on your terms is redefining success, but how you choose to look at it. And what's fascinating, and I've worked with a bunch of people on this, is that the more we focus on a holistic approach, then everything else expands. Because I have people, heavy hitters, and they're like, Kluver, if if we take our foot off the gas on the business, everything's going to go to hell. And I promise you, that's not the case. The the more you can become well-rested, healthier, happier, you will make better decisions in business. And I can tell you for us that since we've really leaned into this, we've actually been able to 10x our income. And we take two to three months off a year for adventure travel consistently. And we get to work with the people we love working with. And we get to make an impact and have a difference. But we're defining what success is. Not anybody else, but we are on our terms. As you're talking, it's making me think about growing up, I always wanted to help and make an impact in the world. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I knew that that was just built into me. And so early on, after I graduated from college, I joined Teach for America and I taught fourth grade. And my whole outlook was the problem is out there. I need to fix what's out there and help the people Mm -hmm. out there. And over time, I've really come to see for myself and realize, as you were talking about, the real change needs to happen within. If I can make myself the best version of me, that's what's going to change the world. And I think that's a journey that everybody at some point goes on, but it's such a profound thing that you're talking about. The other aspect of that, I think, is, is when people can start to give themselves permission yes, to do things that are different so that we transition and we let go of the success narratives that's been based by maybe the scarcity mindsets of our parents or peers or even the wine commercials. And I would speculate that with the majority of your listeners, you've got a bunch of really wicked smart people who figured out, I could do this and make some money. I could do that and make some money. I could do this. And we sort of just lump along and evolve rather than say, no, 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 no. Let's take a step back and say, what is it I want? Where do I want to be extraordinary? Where do I want to drive the world like nothing? And that to me is one of the biggest challenges. And we work with people in the Life in Your Terms course to help people to define that. Because when you have really smart, hardworking people, the hardest thing is figuring out what the dream is. And then once they have the dream, everything else, their mechanics, then their machines about going and hammering and getting it. But I'll pause there. I ramble a little bit, but that to me is the most exciting piece. When I can get somebody completely lit up about figuring out what is their new dream? What is it they want to do? How do they want to change the world? But going outside that box so funny how we go through life. And we come across this with our investors a lot too, is one of the first questions we ask is, what are your ultimate investing goals? What do you want your life by design? That's what we call it, life by design to look like. If money were no object, what would you do with your time? And almost every time we hear just this pause on the line and they're like, huh, never thought about that. Really good question. (laughs) We're like, well, you don't know where you're going. You're probably not going to get there. And so this is clearly, it's a struggle that a lot of people have. So I'm curious for you guys and the people that you work with, how do you coach them if they don't have that dream in place, if they don't know where that vision or that destination is, what are some of the questions, the guidance that you give them to help them discover or create that dream? 
Well, actually, we use that question ourselves as well. If you had all the money in the world, what would you do with your time? That's a great question. What we do is we ask these questions, and one of them is that, and I'll give you the others. And what we say is, don't think about the logistics. Doesn't matter. That's not the point. The point is to dream, is to go back and be that six-year-old kid who had an imagination and had ideas, and really do not think about how to do any of it. That doesn't matter right now. What we do want you to do is dream, is imagine. So we asked the question, if you had all the time in the world, what would you do? And money wasn't a trouble. If you had all the money in the world, what would you do with all the money? If you were on your deathbed and you were looking back at your life, what would you want people to say about you? And then the other question we ask is, if you only had three years left to live, what would you want to accomplish in that time? Or what would you want to be known for or things like that? So we give them these different like ways of tapping into the dream of whatever it is for them. And again, we really make it clear, do not think logistics, but people do. They think, well, but how could we do this? And how can we do that? And it's like, no, that's going to come separately. Dream first. It doesn't matter how it happens yet. That's not where we're at. It's two separate things. And that's how we do it. We take those that people add that question, and then we go through and do a bubble test version to narrow it down. We teach something, Jim Collins in business, and I have a lot of experience scaling huge companies, talks about a BHAG, a big, hairy, audacious goal. We like to think of it as an LCG, a life-changing goal. And if people can come up with that, maybe it has more of an altruistic view. Maybe it's financial, maybe it isn't. So for us, we shifted our thinking on ROI from a return on investment to a return on impact. And our life-changing goal is to introduce a million people to a new way of thinking, impacting countless lives. I can tell you, open and honest, Andy, the first time when I wrote that down five years ago, I was crying and I could barely write it. I was so filled with imposter syndrome. Like who the, won't use that word, do I think I am to, to even think that way? And with the work that I've done with some of my leadership teams and some of the other people, it's actually going to be low. I think people say, hey, how you doing? And they say, well, yeah, I'm fine. Well, I like to say I'm the luckiest cat on the planet because I really believe I am. The secret is, I think we all are. I think we are the luckiest people in the world and that the universe wants to give us everything we want. We just have to be clear in what we're looking for. And with that, it comes down to one of the the specific questions I wrote down when you said yours was that I like to ask is, if you knew you couldn't fail, what would you dare to dream? And if you can start dreaming in that way, then extraordinary happens. Yeah, that's so good. And it's not always about having the right answers. It's about having the right questions to frame your thinking, guide you down that path. And I love these questions you've presented here. I think they're such powerful questions that they really get you to think. They take that how out of it because you're right, Rika, that so many people get stuck in the how and they limit themselves because they don't know the how. So then they just stop there. Right. But when you take that out and you really dream big, we had our team do this recently at our team retreat. And we said, write a letter to yourself three years from now. This was last year. So we said December 31st, 2025. And on that date, write a letter to yourself and tell yourself about all the amazing things that you have in your life and all the things that you've accomplished and how proud of yourself you are. And then we had some people read it and they were crying right there because it was such a powerful and profound experience because of the day-to-day, the hectic, this work-life balance myth, right? People are always going, 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 and they don't often have the time to stop and take out that filter and to really dream big as you're talking about. And so I'm curious when you guide people down this path, what are some of the dreams that people have? Is it about the big cars or the fancy cars and the houses and the vacations? Or what do people ultimately, when they go down this path, what are some of those dreams that people have? I think in this case, it's one of those things. And and these are some of the ground rules we set, particularly with spouses or partners is making sure that part of this is learning the process and it's learning to dream again. And it's learning to be that bulletproof, invisible six-year-old that's not afraid to dream. And we've seen things as simple as choosing, we want to take a balloon ride over Sedona. Now for that particular person, she was going to have to save money. She didn't travel. She was scared. 
it was a big deal. Now, for you, that might be a to-do over a weekend, but it doesn't mean that it wasn't critically important. We've had people uproot their lives and move to different places. We've had multiple people change careers. We've had people choose to do, I have uh, one guy I work with in the UK, he's down 140 pounds. Reek does endurance stuff. We do this ourselves on a regular basis in multiple ways. But I think the biggest thing is making sure that we're supportive. We talk about creating champions, not saboteurs with our partners. So whatever the dream is somebody has, it's their dream and it's critically important. It may be on the outside, you may say, oh, that's small but it isn't. To me, it's more the process that somebody's starting to learn that and then they can go out and change and be bold. So it's kind of hard to say specific if there's one or the other, but we've had people want to set up billion dollar nonprofits, start and change the world. It's the full cross section. And to me, the thing that lights me up is that they're starting to do that. They're starting to think about that. They're looking way past the financial and the stuff. But to your point, almost never almost never does it have to do just with finances. Usually it has to do with quality of experience and life. We have a tool on the website at lifeon-yourterms.com that's called a balance wheel. It takes about five minutes and it'll give immediate results and it'll give people a snapshot of what amazing looks like or where they are today. And then they can start to visualize where they want to be. And that ends up being sort of a tool to help guide the dreaming to start with it. Yeah, I love that, that you can have a quick snapshot of exactly where you are in all these areas of your life. I think that's so valuable to do and not just one time, but ongoing once a quarter or at least once a year to reassess where you currently are because things shift. And I love as you're talking about the goals that you gave it this frame of even if something seems small to you, it might not be small to that person. And I fully believe whatever desire that you may have it's meant for you. The universe put that in your path for a reason. Didn't put it into maybe your partner or your spouse or your friend, but you have that desire for a reason. And that means that it's meant for you. And so I'm curious. So now after you guide people to dream big through their bulletproof six-year-old selves, and they've got this big dream. So then what's next? How then come in at that point? Or what's the process to get from here to there? So for the process, you just did your retreat with your business, and I applaud you for doing that. And when you do those types of letter exercises, it's beautiful to build culture and build cohesion and trust within the teams. But we go through and we have a full process to where we start with the dreaming. I believe every organization, individual couple goes through four phases, stabilize, visualize, strategize, and execute. We basically outline the same basic tools, but for couples and individuals, We just did this ourselves. We just did the balance wheel. We just finished our own retreat. But people actually end up with a full guide map that they can update each quarter on where they're going. But when you have great business people, the idea of just taking the tools and processes that they already know and applying it to a holistic integration of their life, people are like, well, that's a good idea. It's like, well, yeah, we have no problem setting metrics and goals and rocks and quarterly objectives in our business. Why don't we do that in our personal life? And when you can take those tools and start applying that in there, all the way down to making sure we're clear on our values, that we have that BA, we outline a full vision, goals for both of us individually, and then quarterly rocks. And then we have our bucket list of dreams that we have as our long-term opportunities list. So there's a lot of tools that we can use in business, but just applying it to our personal lives as well, integrating it. We'll get back to our conversation with Chris and Rika in just a minute. Have you been thinking about investing in real estate, but aren't sure you have the time or the desire to manage the investment? Perhaps you're afraid like we were that you'll make the mistake of choosing the wrong market or the wrong team and lose your entire investment. Well, that's exactly why we created the Good Egg Investor Club. We do the work of identifying solid real estate investment opportunities in the best markets around the country and then partner with you to acquire these investments and then we'll all share in the returns. We'll identify the growing markets, strong, experienced teams, and the solid deals. We do all the heavy lifting of managing the tenants and the renovations, and as a passive partner, you get to enjoy all the benefits of investing in real estate, monthly cash flow, long-term appreciation, and the ongoing tax benefits. 
When we first discovered passive investing through real estate syndications, we realized it fit perfectly into our busy lives. We could put our money to work for our families, work less, and get more time back in our days so that we could focus on what matters most and discover our true passion and purpose in life. We've now helped hundreds of people invest passively in real estate syndications and are seeing the positive impact it's had on their lives. We invite you to partner with us by joining the Good Egg Investor Club today so you can start putting your money to work for you and get more time back in your day because we know that when people have more time in their days, they can do the true work they were intended to do and the world will be a better place. To sign up for the Good Egg Investor Club, go to goodegginvestments.com slash invest and we'll take it from there. That's goodegginvestments.com slash invest. And now back to our chat with Rika and Chris Kluver. And I'm curious because I know you both work with a lot of couples as well. So when you work with couples, do they have separate dreams or do they have one shared vision? And how do you then support and guide them partnering together? Or tell me a little bit more about that. I think what I've seen, what is happening is that, yes, individuals have their goals. And what you want is a supporter or a champion in the partner to say, yes, go for it. I love what you're doing. So it's about engaging each other, not necessarily doing the same goals. It's all right to have your separate goals, but then to also have goals that you make together. And so there are three separate things. It's the individual goals so for each partner, and then it's the us goals as well. But what you want is always to talk to the partner, you know, to have the partner's buy-in. Because the more you have a supporter or a champion or encourager of whatever it is you're looking to do, the more likely you're going to do it too, because you've got that person behind you saying, yes, go for it. Those individual ones, but then together you can work on things too, whatever it may be. Like for us, especially, like we're both wanting to learn first time downhill skier. So I'm going all in, made the decision. I want to be a really proficient downhill skier so that I can do backcountry skiing with my husband so that we can go do the Dolomites. So this is a dream I'm having. So I've already been to the Dolomites. I've hiked there in the summer, but now I'm imagining in the winter where I can go hut to hut skiing from place to place, feeling confident, alive, vibrant on the ski slopes, but I need to do it I need to begin somewhere, but I've made that decision. And even though it may take three years out before I even do the dream with my husband, it's a dream we're doing together because he's also wanting to look, he's a great downhill skill already, but at least we're in this thing together. And so that's our together goal. And it really helps to have the other person be in the support as well for individual goals, whatever those may be too. So something that I would caution, and this would be for any of the business owners that are listening, is that traditionally business owners and dudes are even worse is we don't want to listen to the solution. We don't want to listen to the problem. We just want to dive in and fix it. And it's something that we really, really preach to to really have a spirit of curiosity. So if your partner has something that comes up as a, what? No, we'll just solve this. It's taken care of. No, no, it's like, no, 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 no. I beg and plead, just listen and be curious and ask questions and then to Rika's point, how can you then choose to be a champion to help them and empower them to achieve it on their terms? But what happens is when we model that behavior, that behavior becomes much, much easier to be reciprocated. And if you're curious about me and I'm curious about you, it's amazing how often people are in alignment with one another, but they're talking past each other and they're using different words or they're using things in a little different language. So really, really, A, number one, don't solve. And that's so much for business owners. That's the natural state. But I beg and plead, don't solve, but really focus on trying to be curious. Help me understand why this is. What does that mean? What do you mean by that? What does that word? And dig and really, but open and curious so that you can fold those together. And then usually you can integrate them together in some way. Sometimes not, but a lot of times you can. Yeah. I love that. Love everything that you both are saying. I mean, this process is when people sit down and do it and actually learn these techniques that you're talking about and integrate them into their lives, 
it makes such a profound change, not just for themselves, but I'm sure the skills that you're teaching with partnerships also translate to parenting, also translates to other members of their family or their community or their friendships. And it's about that curiosity and that partnership and that willingness to not go in and fix everything for everybody, but really be there as a champion. I love the term, be there as a champion for other people's goals and their desires and help them along the way. So that's fantastic. One last question before we move into the Life and Money Show spotlight round, mindset. I'm sure that mindset plays a huge part in all of this. Tell us a little bit about, do you find that the people that you work with, is that a big challenge for them? Have they already gone through some mindset work? Do they come up across mindset challenges along the way? And what do you see as the value of mindset in this whole journey? We've brought in, Rika Rika and I are smiling because we just have brought in five new coaches who Mm -hmm. have thousands and thousands of hours specifically focused on mindset from NLP Mm -hmm. and a variety of different Mm -hmm. tools. But my favorite quote from Henry Ford says, whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't, you're right. And without a doubt, the primary headwinds we're facing are mindset. Because people, even from the very, very beginning, I actually was working on a talk with, and I talk about the four mindset shifts that you need to achieve to get started. But the first is to believe that you actually can have it all, but that you have to choose how you're going to integrate it. It comes down to scarcity versus abundance mindsets. In so many cases, it comes down to that spirit of curiosity. It's the accumulation of all the brain damage we've experienced in our life up to the point we are that a lot of times we're unwinding. If we could teach these basic thoughts to a five-year-old, what they would do would just be nothing short of extraordinary. But the reality is, is that we have headwinds in our mind shift that we have to back down on each segment. Just like the idea of starting with the idea that Rika was originally an accountant for a venture capital firm in London and transition jobs at 40. Well, the idea, the mindset of first immigrant daughter to go to school, the idea of good at math, that's a good safe job. Even if you hate it too bad, it's safe. So yes, there's a lot of mind shift work. Oh, that yes. Happens. But the thing is, is with most business owners and heavy hitters, nobody ever wants to admit that. They just want to come in and what are the mechanics? What are the tools? Yep. What's the strategy? I can mm-hmm. handle this. It's like, okay, yep. but dude, you're getting in your own way. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a fine line that we have to handle as we walk through those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not always about the tactical, the mechanics strategy. And I've gone through that unwinding myself as part of an immigrant family myself. I came to the States when I was four and was that on that same path. My parents were like grades, 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 math and science and went down that same path and had to unravel all of that in the years after college, going from job to job and finally becoming a business owner. And that's what ultimately opened up my vision and my path and the mindset shifts I've gone through over the last five years, I'm a completely different person. And so it goes back to what we were saying at the beginning of the show is that whatever you can do to make yourself the best version and to achieve those goals that you have for yourself, you find more fulfillment, which ultimately allows you to have that greater impact within the community. So I love all of this. For all of our listeners out there, please, please, please go and do the balance wheel assessment. I think that's a fantastic way to get a great snapshot of where you currently are. And we'll hear more about that and where you can find that in just a moment. But we're going to roll now into our life and money show spotlight round. We're going to ask you three questions. We ask everyone, Chris and Rika, you ready? You bet. Mm-hmm. All right. First question is, tell us one thing that you're doing to live a meaningful and intentional life by design. Rico, why don't you start us off? Okay. So what I'm doing is every morning I say my gratefuls. I do two things I'll lead into, but I do gratefuls. So as soon as I wake up, I say a grateful or two or three. I then do a 10 minute meditation, try and sit quietly with my thoughts. I then do 10 minutes of reading a book of any kind, but getting some reading in. And then I do a 10 minute of journaling and saying what went well the day before. So those are things I do. And with my meditation, What I do in particular is to say my motivation, what's my intention or motivation behind the meditation is to be a good person. 
And how am I a good person? It's that I want to be patient, present, positive, and playful. And how do I do that? It's with my words, my thoughts, and my feelings. So that really, and then that I have an impact on those around me, that they feel that from me and that they in turn feel that and pass it on to others. So that's my intent or the the thing I do every day. I love that. I'm going to have to write that down and put that on my wall. What were the four P's? Patient, positive, Mm -hmm. present, present, and playful. And playful. Yes. I love those. Those are really great framework to think about intention and really being the best version of yourself in all these different areas. I love that. Mm -hmm. Chris, anything you want to add? For us, we just finished. We do an annual retreat. This time we did a staycation because we were picking up skiing and we're right by ski area, Colorado. And I can tell you that for us, putting that intentionality and the integration of that really, really, really helps us. It has had a massive, massive impact to put the goals and having a full vision of where we want to be. What does amazing look like for us on a holistic level for this year has been really powerful. Love it. Taking that time to really reflect and think critically versus just going along by default. All right. Second question, share with us a life or money hack, a tool, a tip, a resource, something that has really helped you on your journey or something that you're using with your clients and coaching members that you think will help the listener. So for me, one of the things that we talk about, if I'm working one-on-one with somebody, the balance wheel, inevitably, nobody feels like they have enough time. Well, the three most important things in the world that we have are our time, our talent, and our treasure. Only three things on the planet we can leverage. And our time is our most valuable asset because it decreases by every second. And one of the very, very simple hacks that I get people started with is the relationship with their phone and how well they're sleeping. So a super simple one is keeping the phone not in the room you sleep in and making sure that you put sleep as the highest valued asset you have. I have a public CEO that I coach on a couple, two to five times a week. And he will tell you now after we've been working together for over three years, he will say that his biggest competitive advantage is being well-rested. So I think a very simple time hack is making sure your phone is out of the room, that you invest the full eight hours, at least seven hours if you can, and then take them from Rika. Start setting that intention of gratitude when you go to sleep and the same thing when you wake up. But if we invest as much time and energy around doing a great sleep, and I know that sounds really simple and really woo-woo, but it's the thing that we abuse the most. And if you can do that, it allows you to start making more cognizant decisions on how you choose to look at everything else. Mm -hmm. It's that one domino that impacts everything else. And I'm right there with you. When I do get that full eight hours, it does make a difference in all those things that Rika, you're talking about being patient and being present and being positive and being playful because I have more of that energy to give. I'm not just trying to fill myself up, but I have energy pouring out of me that I can then give back to others. And so that's such a good one. And you're right. It sounds super simple, but it has this deep impact. Final question is share with us one thing that you're doing to help make the world a better place. I know you're doing lots of different things, but maybe pick one to share. Well, I think the work I do with my couples, improving their communication with each other and the way they love on each other and relate to each other. I think that work that I do in turn, helps their relationship with themselves, with each other, and then onto their children and onto the people around them. So I feel when a couple has a solid base and a solid ground to be on, then everything else from them, how do I say? It's like a ripple effect. It's like a ripple effect. That's right. It's like a ripple Mm -hmm. effect. And my husband and I recently did some couples coaching and counseling as well. And you're absolutely right. When you are on the same page and you can support each other and you have that shared vocabulary and those tools, it makes all the difference in the world because this is a person that you're living with and you're seeing day in and day out, all the moments of the day, you're sharing all these logistical duties, parenting, all these things. And if you can sing from the same songbook, so to speak, and have Mm -hmm. that shared understanding and be a champion for each other, it Mm -hmm. really does make a difference, not only in your own life, but in your business, in your work, in the community, in your kids as well. And so I think that's a great one. For life on your terms, we love working with the high net worth and the high bandwidth people 
but we're in the process, like I gave a talk next week to military. And our intention is to give it away to our military brothers and sisters transitioning back into the world. And we're working on trying to get into the foster system so that the kids that start to age out of the foster system, in both those cases, I don't know that it's more resources they need, but a different mindset and a different way of thinking. And if we can give these tools away that big time CEOs are paying for, I would be happy to give that away. So that's the area that we've chosen in 2023. We're going to try and focus to make that happen. Fantastic. I know you're already well on your way to the million people, and I'm sure that 2023 will be a banner, banner year for you both. So with that, I we've shared so much on this episode, and you've covered so many great tools and tips and questions for the listener, but I know it's just the tip of the iceberg with all that you guys offer. So for anybody who might want to follow up with you and learn more, maybe get involved with all that you do, tell them what's the best place that they can go? If they could go to the lifeon-yourterms.com website, they can sign up. We do have a a cohort starting and it's going to be an eight-week experience, virtual experience. It starts on February 20th. Annie, we didn't talk about this, but I am more than happy to offer your listeners a 10% discount if they just use your name and we'll set up an affiliate code for you. But they're welcome to go to the website. They can get info on the balance wheel there. It's right at the top of the page. They can reach out. And if they want, they can go to reach out to me at Christopher Kluver on LinkedIn. K, Christopher with a K, Kluver with a K. Love it. All right. Well, we'll definitely, with a cohort starting in February, not only all of our listeners know, and that information will be in the show notes, because this is so much of what we preach as well. It's not all about the money. People come to us to learn how to invest because they want to grow their wealth, because that's the symptom that they're seeing, right? But it's really, it goes deeper than that. And it's really about learning the mindset, learning the tools to really dream big and create your life on your terms. And so we'll definitely help you spread the word on that front as well. Chris and Rika Kluver, founders of Life on Your Terms, seasoned entrepreneurs, best-selling authors, speakers, and coaches. Chris and Rika, thank you so much for being here and sharing your story and your infinite wisdom with us and our listeners today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. You've been listening to The Life and Money Show, the number one podcast for people who, like you, are living a meaningful and intentional life by design, Build Building true wealth and making an impact in the world. For more resources, check out goodegginvestments.com and be sure to join the Life and Money Show community on Facebook. And if you got value out of this show, please subscribe and give us a five-star review so we can continue to bring you amazing new conversations. 